Hello, everyone. My name is Laura D. Gibson. I am the curator of the current exhibition displayed at Detroit Artists Market entitled Finding Home, Stories of Displacement. Finding Home, Stories of Displacement reflects on stories of home, displacement, and memory while exploring narratives of specific marginalized communities in America through the eyes of local Detroit artists. Finding Home showcases work that advocates against displacement while shedding light on its historical consequences. This reflection is especially necessary during the COVID-19 crisis. And here today we have one of the participating artists, Parisa Daguerre. Uh, Parisa Daguerre, Gadiri, excuse me, is from Tehran, Iran, who was a visual artist, curator, and filmmaker who earned her BA in visual communications from Art and Architecture University and her MFA in Art and Design from the University of Michigan in 2014. She moved to the US in 2009. Her work has been exhibited nationally and internationally, including South Asia American Collective, the Sixth International Media Arts Award, Experimental Bio, A Woman House or a Roaming House, Fajir International Visual Arts Festival, and the Red Bull House of Art in here in Detroit. Her work is featured in the Huffington Post, the Brooklyn Rail, Video Focus, 1969, the Michigan Daily, Unite Women, and the Visual Art Beat Magazine. Idiri has made four short films entitled Steel, Broken Glass, The Ones Who Love Me Are Gone in One Way. Her short film Steel has been screened at Women's Independent, Independent Film Festival, Santa Monica, California, the International Film Festival for Documentary Short and Comedy, in Indonesia, and Cine West, Sydney, Australia. Still won the International Award of Merit Winners from the International Film Festival for Documentary Short and Comedy, Indonesia. Broken Glass is screened at Ladies First International Film Festival Cork City, in Cork City, Ireland. The Ones Who Loved Me Are Gone was the winner of the Berlin Flash Film Festival Berlin, Germany in 2017. And she is currently an assistant professor of graphic design at Michigan State University. So Frieza, it's such a pleasure again to have you. Um, and I'll give you the floor to discuss a little bit more about your practice and your current piece in the exhibition right now, which is entitled On Hands. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Laura, for this opportunity, and I'm so um, honored to be part of this beautifully curated show, especially because Detroit has such a special place um, in my heart, so <laughs> it's always good to be, you know, among the Detroit artists and have my show and exhib um, exhibit there, so I'm really proud. And um, so based on what you read from my bio, I um, am a graphic designer, <clears throat> excuse me, and a fine artist, which it's really hard for me to just have a really distinct line, to draw a distinct line between the two. And I think that there are so many times that for me, one feed the other, like um, when I'm having this, um, uh, publication or curatorial, you know, things, as you know, I will go back to my graphic design knowledge and then um, be inspired by like the grids and layouts and compositions and everything. And for if something is much more concept oriented, I will um, take advantage of my fine art knowledge, which is good. So, and then I have worn many hats, as you mentioned, um, I have curated shows, I have made short films, and I'm teaching graphic design, which is great. And um, I'm also working as a photographer and fine artist um, and uh, multimedia installation. So, um, and that's the best thing to describe fine art for it is that you can do whatever you want <laughs> and you can just um, dip your toe in that water and just get a you know scratch the surface of everything so um, I think um, but the connecting th uh, theme for all of my work comes from my very personal experience when I moved from Iran to the U.S. as you mentioned in 2009 and that um, became the central focus of my work because I never had any idea about the immigration and what comes after and what are some of the things that you gain and some of the things that you miss and lose. 
So, um, and it's fascinating. I will never regret my decision to move, <laughs> that I immigrated, but there are so many nuances that I still um, try to explore in my work. And um, I keep switching media and that's what I really like about that. Um, I cannot just fully focus on like, I'm just going to uh, explore ex um, immigration in only film or in only photographs. Um, because I think that each media gives me a few, you know, different options and um, things that I, maybe the con, it will definitely inform the concept. So, um, and for the series in the show, it's called On Hands. Um, these are my family photographs that I have torn very carefully and with a broken heart. And then I try to um, kind of delete the people, but just, um, make sure that their hands are in focus because when you refer to COVID, I also wanted to mention that um, in during COVID, any physical um, connection was also a part of a disease or something that would be contagious or infectious. So especially like handshaking, uh, handshaking and all of those very little things that are part of our routines. So as I mentioned in my um, um, artist statement for the show, I can also read it here. It's from Georges D.D. Huberman, which is a, who is a French philosopher. He says that we use our hands for better or for worse. We strike or stroke, build or break give or take, we should, in front of each image, ask ourselves the question of how it gazes at us, how it thinks us, and how it touches us um, at the same time. So I really loved his um, take on how the hands are charged with all these contradictory notions, like we strike or stroke. Um, and all of those, um, and that's what made me to explore this notion of loss, um, disconnection, and also distance by um, just showing the hands and removing the main subjects. I mean, what, what a beautiful, I mean, one heartbreaking still when you had mentioned to me today, of the opening night that if they were your like you know your archival family photos i mean already experiencing the loss you know in terms of distance to your family and then kind of having this memorial you know representation photograph you actually you know symbolizing that pain by tearing the photo it's kind of like <laughs> this again this feeling of like brokenness this feeling of distance um but I can feel it in, in my own personal practice dealing with hands and the connectivity. Um, mm -hmm. You know, of course, during COVID-19, like you said, it was just this immediate separation, this instant trauma, you know, and those who were already distant from their families who were, you know, foreigners, you know, who came here, you know, just to live a, another life had not even imagined this additional type of distance. So uh, that, that's, that, that statement from that, from the piece, you know, um, you know, it also is very impactful for my own personal, you know, practice, and that's why I wanted to, you know, give it a, a larger range, you know, for people who are in the city, but also exist in the city, who have family and friends who they had absolutely no contact with, you know, living in other parts of the world. So thank you for sharing that. Um, on, on top of the, the, the description of your, your work on hands, you know, what is it that you want your viewers to know specifically, you know, relatable to people who have migrated here? Um, the message of, you know, empathy and sympathy to those who had to experience this type of distance. Um, what did you want viewers to, to specifically understand about the on hands piece? Yeah, I think that um, I usually, um, believe that people have experienced moving and distance and immigration um, in even like very minor scale during their life, even if it was 
going to college or going to another you know, city for work. So everyone has experienced some sort of detachment and departure and sense of loss and distance, both geographical and emotional. So that's why I think that anyone who had experienced that, you know, who had made that journey during their life can easily uh, read my work because it's all about the human, very, very basic human experience of moving. Even um, if it's within a country, even within a very like a specific city or town, it doesn't have to, you don't have to move borders, right? So um, I think that's why I'm not so worried about my audience take from my work. But one thing that I really want them to focus on is that what remains um, when we take out the people like I'm referring to the idea of when we lose someone or when we don't see someone and they are out of the picture. So literally when I take them out of the picture and we only have to deal with their remains, which is their hands with their affectionate gestures, if it's hugging, if it's touching, if it's holding, what would happen to those things that are ephemeral? you know, a love that you get from someone that although that person is not in this world anymore, but you can still, you know, that's something that you still hold dear. So those are some of the things that I was um, more interested, you know, longing for the, those types of connections that even if it's not this person, but if it's this gesture of, you know, holding someone so tight, or if someone is so emotionless, you know, maybe um, their hands are very like formal, and shows a very, they're very conservative in like showing their affections or being very open about their relationships and, and emotions. So those are some of the nuances that I was more interested to explore in my work. And as I said, those photographs are from different, <clears throat> excuse me, um, time period during my life. Some of them were my high school friends. Some of them were my parents when they came to visit me. Some of them are um, from my um, when I, the first time that I went home to visit my family. And I was just so interested in about um, to explore more about the dynamic of the relationships, you know, because I think for an immigrant, it's not always so much about the physicality of distance and sense of loss, but it has this emotional layer that even when I might be talking to my phone, um, talking to my dad over phone, like every day or every week, there is something that's missing. There is this emotional disconnectedness, you know, that um, I, I feel sorry for that. And I, that's something that I'm not very excited about, but it's something that we all experience. And that's something that I was really fascinated by. Yeah, and, and to enunciate on that, just imagining how all the new technologies that erupted mm -hmm. when COVID-19 hit, um, you know, this kind of like instant um, manufacturing of ways to communicate, just like reached this height during COVID-19 that most of us will probably never go back from using ever. Um, so you mentioning that, you know, it's, it's, you had ways to connect, but you had to explore the new dynamics of it, the things that we were missing, the things that we have probably taken advantage of, or some even culturally understanding that this is more important than you know what some people here in America probably understand of what's the most important in terms of affection, is what displays of affection, ways of communicating. Um, so again, it's it's very impactful to understand how you know ways when we communicate in different parts of the world, but how it can be relate to your new home here in the city of Detroit. Um, mm -hmm. And so I hope, you know, people who came to see your work can understand that. And of course, explore more into your work and explore more into your practice. So is there anything currently that you're working on that kind of, you know, explains a little bit more about, you know, your own hand series or other video work or photography work that you're looking into right now that you'd love to talk about? 
Sure, yes. Uh, currently, I'm working on two projects. One is a collaboration. It's a um, interactive wall installation that I'm working with a friend of mine. She's also um, from Iran, and she's also an educator at the University of Minnesota. So I've never seen her. I've never met her, but um, we collaborated on a project, which is very exciting. And again, it's about the notion of immigration, but through storytelling, abstract forms and making it interactive and fun because um, I'm famous <laughs> for that everything that I make it just so heavy and dark and makes everyone cry and it's like let's have some fun with the notion of immigration it doesn't always have to be so heavy-handed <laughs> so this was um this was also the challenging part for me you know how i can make it something that even children you know could play with it have fun with it but at the same time kind of get some you know visual connection between the work and their experiences. And um, my other project is also about, it's not about immigration as much, but more about the human relationship. And I am um, I have collaborated with another professor from the computer science uh, from Michigan State University. And she helped me uh, visualize my survey that I conducted um, and to using the natural, language processing uh, to turn all those you know uh, phrases and sentences into um, dots in the space that I could connect and come up with a physical object which is um, I'm really excited about and I can wait for <laughs> the school work to be done so I can fully focus on that so again the underlying theme is about connections and moving and um distance, but in different ways. That's that's what I um, always try to do, you know, just to explore the media and um, just see how each media can um, enable me to go further and deeper. Absolutely. And it's funny that you mentioned that you never met your collaborator ever. So it's just kind of fascinating how you know now it's just it's just the time to connect no matter how you know email text facetime zoom calls with the video off it's it's just new ways but you still feel relatable to someone far away close by you know you know so that's a beautiful thing and of course the video photography which you know surprisingly is the main you know media in the show you know it, it holds that memory but it also kind of re um it's an immersion of uh, nostalgia that happens as well. So, you know, family and friends can connect, but also new relationships can be, be developed from, from this. So again, thank you, Per Parisa, for joining me today. It was lovely speaking with you. Um, is there any last minute thoughts, uh, any ways that people can get in contact with you, learn some more about your work? Did you want to share that as well? Yeah, uh, people um, can always visit my website and um, they can find me through my MSU portal. But yeah, I'm always up for collaboration and new ideas and connecting with people because I always find people inspiring and surprising. So <laughs> those are some of the two uh, things that I really like. Um, about um, having interaction with people that you never know what will come out of that discussion or conversation. Maybe that could be the future collaboration or, you know, maybe it's a small word. We're all connected in magic ways. So <laughs> I'm always, um, I always welcome that um, challenge and opportunity to connect with more people. That sounds great. Thank you so much. And again, Finding Home Stories of Displacement is currently on display at Detroit Artist Market running until May 21st. So please visit DetroitArtistMarket.org to learn more. And again, thank you, Parisa. I hope you have a rest of the day. And I just would love to, again, learn more about you and your work in the coming years. So thank you again. Thank you so much, Lara. And um, congratulations on curating this beautiful show. Thank I'm you. so honored to be part of it. Have a beautiful day, too. You too. Thanks. Bye.